Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fuji Guys channel. My name is Gord. The Fujifilm GFX 50R is the second camera in Fujifilm's GFX lineup, featuring 51 megapixels on the sensor. It's a rangefinder design camera with a 3.69 million dot EVF. It's a 077 times magnification, making it real easy to look through. It's very lifelike in its colorful gamut. In this video, I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about some of the top features and some of the options you can have your camera set up for. If you want to find out more, keep on watching. On the back of the 50R is where you'll find the very large 3.2 inch LCD screen. Normally you can have that with all the LCD information on there, such as your shutter speed and your ISO, etc. If you want, you can customize all the details that are on there. Pushing the display back button will remove all of the information and allow you to concentrate on your image. Or you can have it where there's all of the information displayed on, again, such as your uh, contrast adjustments, um, etc. Up on the top is where you'll find the view mode. At that point, you can alternate between having it where it's in the electronic viewfinder only, on the LCD screen only, or electronic viewfinder with eye sensor. So when you bring the camera up to your eye, the sensor will actually turn the electronic viewfinder on automatically. And when you have it away from your eye, powers the electronic viewfinder off. Again, pushing it and you have the eye sensor with the LCD image display. When you're taking pictures, the elect use the electronic viewfinder with the eye display. Playing the images back will play them back directly onto the LCD screen. One more press and we're into eye sensor, which is where I like to leave that camera. At that point, when I have the camera pulled up to my eye, I will have the electronic viewfinder in play, or when I have the camera away from my eye, I'm utilizing the LCD screen. On the GFX 50R, there are a total of seven buttons that you can customize what those functions will do. There's also four swipes on the LCD screen. You can customize what those are as well. You can even customize what the rear command dial does. For example, I like to do a lot of landscape photography. And having the three-way level to ensure that my shots are both level this way, as well as the pitch is absolutely level, is crucial to me. So I like to be able to assign that to one of my custom function buttons. To do that, I press and hold the display back button, at which point a schematic of the camera will come up. I choose which button I want to customize, for example, the custom function button number one on the top of the camera. And now I've got six pages of information that I can choose from and make my choice from all those different options as far as what that custom function button will do. I'll select the electronic level from there. Now when I go back to taking pictures, when I press that custom function button, I get the three-way level so I can ensure my shots are nice and level through and through. If I wanted to change it back again, just reverse the process. The GFX 50R has two memory card slots. They're SD, SDHC, or SDXC compatible, and they can take the UHS-2 cards. These are a much faster card because of the extra contacts on there, allows for much faster data throughput. This is very useful when it comes to the RAW files from the 50R, given the file size that they are. It is backward compatible to the UHS-1 devices, so if by chance you have a UHS-2 card in the camera for that fast transfer, but you have a UHS-1 card reader on your computer, not to worry. Once I've got two, both the cards installed in my camera, I have a few, few different memory options when it comes to how the images are being recorded. If I push the menu button and scroll down to my setting and then choose Save Data Setup, from here I scroll down a little further and I can choose Sequential. Sequential, what that does, because I'm shooting RAW plus JPEG, there are going to be two files. And what it will do is record the data first to the memory card that's in card slot number one. When that card fills up, it will then switch and record both the RAW and the JPEG file to the card that's in card slot number two. If I choose backup, now that RAW and JPEG file will be recorded to the card that's in slot one, and then a backup copy will be recorded to card slot two. This is very useful if you're out on an assignment and for whatever reason your card it becomes corrupted, now you've still got a fully functioning card in the alternate card slot. Another option would be for RAW plus JPEG. And what this enables you to do is capture the RAW files to the card that's in slot one and the JPEG files to the card that's in slot number two. So after I've captured my image, I can play the image back. Now, if by chance I want to delete that image in camera, I have to remember to delete that image both in card slot one as well as card slot two. That can get a bit messy. As an alternative, if you press the menu button from within here, you can have a simultaneous delete of both 
files on both cards. Turning that on, and now I simply have to press the delete key once, and both those images are deleted, both the raw file on card slot one, as well as the JPEG file in card slot number two. So those are a few options you have working with your memory with the GFX50R. Many Fujifilm cameras like this GFX50R feature Bluetooth with Wi-Fi connection. The Bluetooth allows for a very fast in, in enabling the Wi-Fi connection. It, the camera uses Wi-Fi to do the heavy lifting of transferring images, but it uses Bluetooth to initiate that connection very quickly and easily. Here's how you set it up Bluetooth the first time around on your Fujifilm Bluetooth enabled camera. On the camera, you need to go to the menu setting, to connection setting, and then to Bluetooth. Go to pairing registration and initiate pairing registration. If you haven't already done so, on your phone you need to download the Fujifilm Cam Remote app and install that. Open that app, camera app up and in the settings you'll find pairing registration. The camera will look for close by Bluetooth enabled uh, smartphones and there's some communication that happens between the two devices. You tap on the camera so select, to select the camera that you're looking for. Camera then does some further communication with the smartphone and confirms that it's okay to talk to the smartphone and the camera. On the camera, I now have the choice of being able to select the date and time from my smartphone. I like to enable this, reason being when I'm ever I'm traveling, if I'm going through different time zones, the camera will automatically adjust the date and time based on my smartphone's ability to connect to the network and update its time automatically. Now that I've got it registered, let's take a look at some of the menu options that are within the camera. From there, I can go drop down one and go to my select pairing destination. And I can have up to seven different devices connected up to my camera, and I just have to choose which device I want to become active. If I want to, for whatever reason, if I lose my smartphone or change smartphones, I can delete the pairing registration. I then have to delete that pairing registration over my smartphone as well. I can turn Bluetooth on or off. Normally you'd want to leave that on, reason being it doesn't use much battery power, so you're not using battery power for the camera or for the smartphone either. Auto image transfer, I'll come back to that in just one second. Before I do though, I want to take a look at smartphone sync setting. In there, I have the option of setting the camera's time automatically from my smartphone, the location automatically from my smartphone, or both the location and the time from my smartphone. That's the one that I like to do. Whenever I'm traveling, now whenever I'm taking a picture, the camera will automatically, about every five minutes or so, pull my smartphone, find the time as well as the location. Now all of the photos that I take are automatically geotagged with my smartphone's location. It makes it easier for sorting out where any given picture was taken after the fact. So turning that on, then I look, go back to auto image transfer. I like to turn that on. That allows me to transfer a three megapixel file from my camera over to my smartphone automatically. If I want to, I can make it the full resolution of the camera, but that's going to fill up my phone a whole lot faster. So let's turn that on. Now I can simply take a picture. And then when I play that picture back, it will initiate the communication to my smartphone. The first time out, you may need to, be, to transfer uh, and start the network settings on your smartphone. After that, it becomes a little bit more automatic. So go to settings and then choose the camera remote. Actually, choose my uh, Wi-Fi and make sure that it's connected up to the camera correctly. Depending on your operating system and your devices, now you need to go back to camera remote and the image is automatically being transferred over to my smartphone when I push the camera into playback mode. Now if I go into my photos on my camera roll and there's the photo automatically transferred over. If I power the camera down, same thing will happen. It will automatically transfer all the images over to my smartphone. The other thing with Bluetooth is it allows me to have a very quick connection between my camera and my smartphone. When you'll notice that there's an icon on the screen that's the Bluetooth icon and it's lit up fairly brightly, that means it's connecting to my smartphone automatically. If ever it's dim, it's waiting to get connected. Starting the app on my smartphone, I have the option for a remote release on my camera. This uses the Bluetooth connection, so it's a lot faster connecting. Now every time I push the shutter button on the camera, sorry, on the smartphone, it takes a picture on my camera. Alternately, I can use remote control and I get a live view of the image 
from my camera over to my smartphone or I can transfer images over after the fact if I don't have the auto transfer enabled. There are some times when you're taking photographs that your depth of focus that you want to have for your image is greater than what your current setting of your aperture can be. And that's where a setting called focus bracketing allows you to capture the entire range of focus all the way from the foreground to the background. What it does is it captures a number of images at different focus distances and then in software afterwards you can compile all those images into taking the appropriate slices from each of the, those images where it's in focus and compiling those and you result, the result is that you end up with one image that's got everything from the foreground to the background in proper focus. Here's how you set up focus bracketing on the GFX 50R. Press the camera menu and then look for the camera icon. About halfway down is where you'll find focus bracketing. There's a couple of variables that kick in here. First of which is the number of frames the capture will, camera will capture. Depending on your scene, there's a few different starting points and suggestions. If you're shooting landscapes, we recommend somewhere around 20 images. For macro shots such as I have here, we recommend upwards of 100 images. The next variable is the step, and that's the percentage that the focus will shift from one exposure to the next. Again, if you're working with a macro situation, you probably want to have a step of about five. At that point, you're going to get a number of smaller slices. If you're in a landscape scenario, you could probably get away with 10. And then the interval, how long it is between each of those shots. If you are using the electronic shutter and your subject's not moving, you could have a zero. So at that point, it captures all of the images directly one after the other. However, for the most part, you probably want to have about five seconds in macro. Obviously, you want to have both the subject and your camera in nice, steady shots. So now I've got the settings within there, I can get back out. Then I push the drive button on the top of the camera and I scroll down to focus bracketing. Once I've got focus bracketing, I focus on the closest point that I want to. At that point, the camera will change the focus to closer to infinity all the way along. If by chance the camera does reach infinity by the time your 100 or so shots come up, if it finishes at 65 and reaches an inf infinity at frame number 65, it will stop shooting. That removes, removes any redundant images after the fact. I just set the timer, let it go, and capture its all scenario. Then in workflow software afterward, I can compile that. Be on the lookout for another video where I actually dive into the aspects of working through the entire workflow and giving you an example on that. But there's a brief overview on how you can use focus bracketing to be able to capture nice sharp images with limited depth of focus all the way from the foreground through to the background. The Fujifilm GFX system, because it's mirrorless and designs of the camera, there are a number of third-party adapters that are available to be able to adapt 35mm lenses as well as medium format lenses to the Fujifilm GFX 50R. When you're adapting a 35mm lens, because the coverage may not be sufficient for the size of the sensor based on the lens that you have mounted, you may need to crop down and capture only a portion of the resulting sensor. To do that, there's a few options within the GFX 50R. Turning power, the camera on and going to the shooting menu, on the second page of the shooting menu is where you will find the 35mm format mode. Depending on the adapter that you have, it may or may not automatically connect up and tell the camera that there is indeed an adapter and you need to shrink down to the smaller crop factor. So you can leave it on automatic if you find that it works properly for you. Otherwise, you can turn that off, at which point the camera will record the entire sensor area and the resulting 50 megapixel image will be recorded, although you may notice that the periphery of the center area of the image may not be quite as sharp. That has to do with the limitations of whatever 35 millimeter lens you have attached to the GFX 50R. If you turn it on, it will automatically crop the image down to the center area of the image, the equivalent of a 35 millimeter uh, square of film, rectangle of film, and the resulting crop factor will kick in. This will allow you actually to be able to use an existing GF lens and extend the range even further. The resulting image is about 30 and a half megapixels, still far sufficient for many applications. Your workflow options for files from the GFX 50R are increasing, including Adobe Lightroom and more recently Capture One, which now fully supports the RAW files from the Fujifilm GFX lineup of cameras. There's even a free version that you can download, Capture One Express Fujifilm. Thanks for watching this video. If you should have any questions about it, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. We do respond to all relevant questions and comments. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified whenever there's a new video uploaded. Look for us on Twitter, at FujiGuys. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, 
I'm Gord of the Fuji Guys. Thanks for watching.